Today we're diving into something that really transforms our language classrooms, building strong teacher-student relationships. Stick around as I share my top five strategies honed from over two decades of teaching Spanish that will not only enhance your teaching experience, but will also resonate with your students. You won't want to miss these insights. My name is Scott, and you're watching Immediate Immersion, where we're all about comprehension-based instruction in the modern language classroom. We'll be right back. Learning and using students' names is not just about managing the classroom. It's about creating a personal connection. When we address our students by name, it shows that we see them as individuals. This can be especially impactful in a language classroom, where creating a comfortable and inclusive atmosphere is key for encouraging students to participate and take risks in using the new language. Sometimes remembering all the names can be a challenge, especially at the start of a new term. But here's a trick I use to remember names. I'll often associate a student's name with a particular characteristic. It's a fun and engaging way to demonstrate your commitment to knowing each student. But also, you need to acknowledge that it's okay to make mistakes with names, especially in diverse classrooms where names might be unfamiliar. I remember I had this student years and years ago, and his name was spelled like Zion the Park. And that's what I called him for like three-fourths of the year, until finally a student, not even him, told me that it's pronounced Zion. I wish you would have told me so I hadn't made the mistake for so long, but acknowledge that I made the mistake and everything went much better. The important thing is to make an effort and be respectful. If you make a mistake, apologize, correct it, and then move on. It shows students that it's okay to make mistakes in your class, which is a crucial mindset in language learning. You'll also want to discuss how using names correctly and consistently can promote inclusivity. This is particularly important for students from diverse backgrounds where a name might hold cultural significance. Taking the time to learn the correct pronunciation demonstrates respect and can make a big difference in how students feel in your classroom. And using students' names in class is a great way to boost engagement. For instance, when asking questions, using a student's name can make the interaction more direct and personal which might encourage a more thoughtful response. It also keeps students on their toes since they know they could be called upon at any time. And finally, knowing everyone's name can be help build a classroom community. Encourage students to use each other's names during pair work or group activities. This not only improves the dynamics of the class, but also aids in language acquisition as students practice in a more relaxed, and familiar setting. Think about when you share stories from your own life that involve the language. Like the time I told my class about getting lost in Madrid and having to use my Spanish skills to find my way, the students were not only amused by the adventure, but also saw a practical application of language skills. It's about making Spanish not just a subject, but a gateway to real life experiences. Organizing events like a Spanish day can also transform the classroom. I once set up stations, a food corner with tapas, a mini cinema showing Spanish short films, and even a dance area for salsa. The students were immersed in the culture, trying new foods and expressing themselves in the language. It was a celebration of the language that went beyond the regular curriculum. Games can also make learning exciting. Take Spanish Jeopardy, for example. I created categories like Spanish idioms, historical figures, and conjugation conundrums. The students were really engaged, and the friendly competition created an energetic atmosphere. It's a fun way to reinforce language skills and encourage quick thinking in Spanish. And bringing in elements of current events or popular culture can also make the language relevant. Discussing a Spanish-speaking artist's latest hit or a significant news event from Latin America brings immediacy to the learning. It's about showing students that Spanish is spoken and used daily by millions, influencing global culture and media. 
and sharing your own language learning journey can be very impactful. When I talk about the difficulties I face learning Spanish, like grappling with the subjunctive tenses or understanding regional accents, it humanizes the process. Students realize that it's normal to face challenges and that perseverance is key. Also, incorporating technology such as language apps or Spanish YouTube channels can modernize the learning experience. For instance, using Duolingo for vocabulary practice or watching a Spanish vlogger for listening comprehension. It shows students the practical applications of technology and language learning and keeps the classroom up to date with the digital world. When students take the initiative, like starting a Spanish language book club, it's a sign of their growing passion. They choose books, led discussions, and even invited native speakers. This not only improved their language skills, but also fostered a sense of community and showed their commitment to immersing themselves in the language. Every student is unique in how they learn a language. I recall the student who was struggling with speaking. So we spent extra time on speaking exercises and role plays. It's about recognizing and addressing each student's specific needs, which can make a world of difference in their learning journey. I've also found that regular one-on-one -on -one check ins can be really effective. These aren't just about academics, but also understanding their feelings towards the language. Sometimes a student might feel overwhelmed or underconfident. These check ins provide a safe space for them to voice their concerns and for us to find solutions together. Giving feedback that's tailored to each student is so important. Like with writing assignments, I try to provide personalized comments that focus on their specific areas of improvement rather than generic feedback. This helps them understand that I am paying attention to their individual progress. And I'm always trying to be flexible in my teaching methods so that I can cater to different learning styles. Some students respond better to visual aids while others prefer auditory learning. So mixing up teaching styles using videos, music, group discussions, or even language games can help cater to individual preferences. Encouraging students to reflect on their own learning process can be empowering. I ask them to identify areas they feel confident in and areas they need more help with. This self-awareness not only aids in their learning, but also helps me understand how I can better support them. I focus on creating opportunities for small successes for each student because nothing breeds success like success. For instance, if a student is good at writing but hesitant in speaking, I'll acknowledge their writing strengths first before gently nudging them into more speaking practice. It's about building confidence step by step. I also make it a point to be accessible outside class hours within reason, of course. Whether it's through email or a learning management system or scheduled office hours, letting students know they can reach out for help anytime makes a big difference in how supported they feel. It's so important to really listen and validate students' feelings. Like this time a student expressed frustration over verb conjugations. Instead of just offering a quick solution, I first acknowledge their struggle showing that I understood and empathize with their challenge. This validation can really help students feel heard and supported. And active listening isn't just about what we say, it's also about how we present ourselves physically. I try to maintain eye contact, nod, and lean in when students are speaking. It's a nonverbal way of saying, I'm here with you and what you're saying matters. This can make a huge difference in how comfortable they feel expressing themselves. I find also that asking open-ended questions helps in understanding students better. Questions like, how do you feel about your progress in Spanish? Or what part of the language excites you the most? These questions encourage deeper conversation and give students space to share more about their experiences and their perspectives. And to ensure that I'm on the same page, I'll often paraphrase what a student says. For instance, so if you're so you're saying that you find speaking in front of the class nerve-wracking. 
This not only shows that I'm listening, but also clarifies and reinforces their message, making sure there are no misunderstandings. I'll emphasize to my students that the classroom is a safe space for sharing thoughts and concerns. This was especially evident when a student shared their anxiety about an upcoming oral exam. We discussed it openly in class, which led to a broader conversation about coping with anxiety in language learning. Sometimes all a student needs is for someone to be fully present. This means not just physically, but mentally too. Not planning the next part of the lesson in your head, but really listening. Patience is key, allowing them the time they need to express themselves, even if it takes a little while. While it's tempting to jump in with solutions, I've also learned that sometimes empathy is more important. Like when a student was struggling with a cultural differences in the language use, instead of immediately offering advice, I shared a story of my own cultural faux pas. It helped them feel less alone and more understood. Now, if you're looking to get started with a solid framework in CI, I highly recommend you start with my free masterclass. Sing, Talk, Read, The Road to Proficiency is a great launching point for a successful CI classroom. You can register free at mm.us slash masterclass. See you there. It's crucial to let students know that you're available for them. I often tell my class, my door is always open, whether you need help with Spanish or just want to chat. This kind of open invitation encourages students to feel comfortable approaching you. I set aside specific times for one-on-one -on -one meetings, especially before major assessments or projects. It's a chance for students to discuss their progress or any concerns they might have. These scheduled times ensure that each student gets individual attention. Sending out regular check-in emails can be really effective. I generally send out a weekly email to all my students. And sometimes I'll even do extra emails so I can drop a message saying, how are you finding the course material? Or how did this week go for you? Anything you're struggling with? It's a great way to initiate conversation and let students know you're thinking about their progress. Technology can also be a great tool for maintaining communication, whether it's through a learning management system, class forums, or even an Instagram group chat. Having a digital platform where students can reach out makes communication more accessible and immediate. I also encourage students to communicate with each other. Sometimes a student may feel more comfortable talking to a peer first. So creating a buddy system or a peer mentoring can be a great way to foster open communication within the class. Also, after handing back assignments, I often offer to discuss the feedback individually. This gives students a clear understanding of their performance and allows them to ask specific questions in a more private setting. I also try to engage in casual conversations with my students outside of class time. Whether it's a quick chat in the hallway or during lunch, these informal interactions can build trust and make students feel more comfortable in opening up. And when students do come in to talk, it's vital to be a responsive listener. Acknowledging their concerns, asking clarifying questions, and offering genuine supportive support shows that you value their input and are committed to their success. Looking to dive even deeper into comprehension-based instruction? you'll want to click on one of these next videos. See you there. Happy comprehensible input.